Riders make their way up to the grid then for the first race of Sunday. And they will look towards the green flag. We will not be starting with a red light for these races. It will be with the green flag. It goes up, but it's not when it goes up, it's when it goes down. The marshals, though, move to the side of the grid. The riders look ever determined towards turn number one. The first race of Sunday morning is a basket on the way. The green flag is up. And it's go, 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 down towards the first line. The first corner for the first time. A great start by Josh Bannister getting into the lead almost immediately as they make their way through turns two and three now. Left and right, long, fast, left and right sweeps. Very difficult to keep the momentum through. Many riders using this as an opportunity to make a few moves. But Josh Bannister currently leads this race. Kyle Payne in second, a great start again from Sullivan Mounsey up to third place at the moment but scrapping further behind we've got many other riders including Ryan Hitchcock he had a good start to the race yesterday and they're already under attack for the race lead it is between Josh Bannister Kyle Payne as they make their way up to the line for the first time yes it is a great start there from Sullivan Mounty has gone up to third spot from sixth on the grid as they come across start finish line as fast as you like Josh Bannister still leads the way from Kyle Payne. A move up the inside there. Was that Harrison Crosby up to third spot? Yes, it was. Late on the brakes. Great move there from your championship leader. Now, Ryan Hitchcock needs to make a move early on in this race proceedings to stay in touch with your race leaders. But it looks like Josh Bannister at the top of the field is opening up a slight gap. It's Sullivan Mounsey still in fourth spot there. All under attack from Ryan Hitchcock through the tight, twisty section. Can Hitchcock make a move up the inside? On the swift back, no, he can't. Not yet. Maybe lining up a move into turn number nine. If not, it'll be a great exit from nine into ten and then try and get him along the home straight into turn one. Ryan Hitchcock uses a lot of different lines around the Tashul circuit, much tighter than some do, especially these bikes which do require a little bit more precision. That can be of detriment as well as of a success for you. But the race leaders, Bannister, it is Josh Bannister still leading ahead of Kyle Payne. They make their way through turns two and three once again. And up towards turn four, it's three hairpins all in one long sequence. The riders are nose to tail, they can almost trip over each other. Bannister, Payne, then it is the following rider behind them. It's a three way scrap for the lead. Harrison Crosby in third place. Fourth place now is Ryan Hitchcock, having managed to get ahead of Sullivan Mounsey on his way then to start getting into the battle, the top three battle for the race lead could be. A top four battle by the time we know it. Over the line once again. We've got 11 laps to go. And it's still Josh Bannister ahead of the number 2725, Kyle Payne. Yes, yeah, Oliver Mounsey looks like he may have made a move ahead of Ryan Hitchcock into turn number one in the background there. Uh, not quite. It's still Ryan Hitchcock just ahead of Sullivan Mounsey and made a great move through the twisty section last lap round. But look at Harrison Crosby. He is continuing to close the gap to the two leaders in front of him. Fastest rider on track at the moment, it looks like. But then you've got Kyle Payne still all over the back of Josh Bannister. Josh Bannister taking very defensive lines into the hairpin, just like he did at Clay Pigeon a month ago. Now, across the start finish line, Josh Bannister's very quick out of the turn at nine hairpin and very fast through the quick turn 10, the final turn on this course. But Harrison Crosby's got a great run across the line over the bump. And can he go late on the break time turn number one? Not quite yet. Josh Bannister's still very, very defensive. Maybe a bit too defensive at this time in the race. Well, well, you put it very well because you get the feeling that he's being held up at the moment. He can't actually use the pace he's got because he's bottled up behind the rider in second place. Trying to go side by side into turn number four, around the outside into the left handed hairpin. Not much chance there at the moment, but certainly signalling that he's eyeing up a move. But Ryan Hitchcock is now closing into the battle for the race lead. A four way scrap, therefore, for the race lead, heading up towards the final few corners. Once again, we've got nine laps to go. Bannister still leads this race ahead of Kyle Payne and Harrison Crosby, the man with the fastest lap, ahead of Ryan Hitchcock and Sullivan Mounsey. That's your top five as it stands at the moment. Lucas Brown is in sixth ahead of Ronnie Harris. Thomas Gomez, Carter Brown and Harrison McKee. That is your top ten. Ben Jolliffe ahead of Ollie Horner. Holly Harris, Taylor Stewart-Campbell and Mike Brady. 
And that's the top 15 runners and riders as it stands at the moment. Now we had look at Kyle Payne taking a long look over his shoulder. That's made him drop back from Josh Bannister at the moment. Now this is a chance for Harrison Crosby to make his move while it looks like Kyle Payne has ruffled a little bit. But look who's in fourth there. That's Ryan Hitchcock. He's closing up. Oh, a bit of a mistake there from Payne. Can he make up the inside? Crosby up the inside into eight. Not quite running over the kerb. This is close stuff from second and third. But as they battle away, they're letting Bannister increase the gap at the front of the field. Now he's got a great run through the fast turn 10 down the back home straight once again to start another lap. Later on the brakes, not quite Josh Bannister still going defensive. He doesn't seem to know he's got a bit of a gap back to Kyle Payne in second. But as they battle away, we've still got Ryan Hitchcock on bike number 43 in fourth spot continuing to close the gap. Now this four have pulled away from Sullivan Moundy and of course Lucas Brown in fifth and sixth position. But after Kyle Payne has seemed to sort himself back out. He's catching back up with Josh Bannister once again. And it's four for the race lead now. Ryan Hitchcock is on the back of this train, really. A four-rider machine at the moment, heading in towards turn nine, the penultimate corner, the very tight right-handed hairpin. We've had a rider gone down at turn number four. They're up and off the bike, walking back. They seem to be all right, so it's just a uh, potential tumble for them. But as we make our way into turn one, once again, under attack, Number two in number one position, Josh Bannister leads this race at the halfway mark. Kyle Payne still second. Third place for Harrison Crosby. Confirmation of the number 98, Thomas Gomez, out of this race uh, was the yellow flag at turn number four. And if there is a yellow flag at turn number four, that's going to prohibit overtaking in that particular section, making sure the riders bunch up again. The top three just ahead of Ryan Hitchcock, a machine length or two behind, but that's just enough to take the pressure off. Josh Bannister using a multiplex of lines at this point, trying to defend every which way, really tight, really wide. None seem to work. He just doesn't quite have the pace to gap them, but he's staying ahead. Over the line once again and down towards turn number one, and now it's Kyle Payne having to defend from Harrison Crosby, still with the fastest lap. They're nowhere near their fastest times at the moment as they make their ways through turns two and three, Liam. Yes, Dan, and the laps have decreased ever so slightly. They're now into the 48, but it was Ryan Hitchcock there. He's used up a lot of his tyre to catch the three leaders who was back into the 48.3s. So he's lost a little bit, little bit of time now with four and a half laps remaining of this mini GP50 race. But as I say that, Ryan Hitchcock is closing the gap to leaders again. So it must have been a mistake on the previous lap, but he looks like he's pushing hard. Look, is P Kyle Payne late on the brakes into turn nine, a little bit wide, just sizing up a gap to see if he can pass Josh Bannister as they head down the street, back into turn number one, late on the brakes once again, can Crosby make a move up the inside? No, he can't, but look, uh, Kyle Payne, he had to lift up a little bit, round the outside goes Hitchcock, uh, Crosby, sorry, not quite doing it just yet, as he come through the back mark, this, can, could this give a chance to Crosby, Payne's wide, Payne's wide, up the inside, has Crosby made a move? Not yet, but can he make it into turn number four? Not quite. There's not the space to make the move. The pace wasn't there. They caught the other rider in this race just at the wrong moment. And now Josh Bannister's been unsettled. Kyle Payne having to look right around the outside. Coming into turn number seven. Did he make the move? He certainly tried to make a move. They're up the inside though. Ryan Hitchcock almost makes contact with Harrison Crosby into the second last corner. They touched only slightly. No damage done for either of them. But that's going to set the tensions going between the battle for third place. That's also at least Josh Bannister and Kyle Payne to have a bit of a scrap on their own. Through turns two and three. Left versus right. Really having to move the bike over. A very physical movement as they make their way up towards the infield once again. Again, we've only got two and three quarter laps to go. The race leader is Bannister ahead of Kyle Payne. Third and fourth is still under attack. Once again, Ryan Hitchcock's going for the inside line. Tries to make it on Harrison Crosby. Crosby runs wide right around the outside at turn number seven. And through has gone Ryan Hitchcock with more mechanical grip. It seemed a bit of a shake of the head there from Harrison Crosby. Not best pleased, it seemed. No, he was not best pleased at all, but it looked like it was uh, Ryan Hitchcock that was making some of the hard moves to begin with. But looking further back, it looks like we might have a change for fifth and sixth. Yes, it is. Brown has just moved ahead of Sullivan Moundy through turn number nine. So that's a great battle going on between the fifth and sixth. Now, there's only a lap and a bit remaining, and it looks like Hitchcock is making inroads into your top two. Bannister's got a bit of a gap on Payne. 
Payne has a little bit of a gap on Hitchcock, but through the tight and twisty section of this track, again, it looks like Hitchcock on the number 43 bike has closed that back up and they've dropped Harrison Crosby. Well, dropping Harrison Crosby is not going to be happy with that. He needs to get his head back into the game. But as we get ready to start the final lap through the penultimate corner, number two, Josh Bannister leads, heading on to the final lap. Kyle Payne in second, Ryan Hitchcock in third. They're a few machine lengths away from each other, but as they make their way into turn one for the final time, Kyle Payne closes up on the brakes. Josh Bannister runs a little deeper. The left-handed line is not quite so good if you're trying to defend. He's been able to soak up so much pressure and place the bike over the last few laps. Can he hold it as they make their way into the infield for the final time? But Ryan Hitchcock up the inside for second place. He's through for second place. Can he attack for the race lead? They've got half a lap to go. And Ryan Hitchcock in the plum seat, ready to pounce if any mistake is made by Josh Bannister. Josh Bannister holding it for the moment. Hitchcock has only got one more chance. No, he's not done it into turn number nine. Will he get a run out of the corner? No, he won't. And it's only a flat out right-hander to go. Josh Bannister comes across the line to take race number two and just holding off Hitchcock and Payne for second and third. Crosby tried to gap them back up again towards the end of the race after a mistake with a few laps remaining. But Josh Bannister takes race number two after commanding defensive ride over Hitchcock and Kyle Payne. And then we had Crosby in fourth spot. Lucas Brown just ahead of Sullivan Mindsey. They had a great scrap for 56th through the entire race there. And then it was Ronnie Harris just ahead of Harrison McKee 